Uh, it is Wednesday night again, and this is the Wednesday night mouse party. <clears throat> I am Dan Foss, and tonight we've got gun websites. How are you doing, gun websites? Good evening. And Gizzard Gary. How's it going, Gizzard? It's going pretty well. Good evening. Thanks for having me. And I remembered the banner. Let me get the right one going. There we go. At the bottom of the screen, there's an email address, untacticalfoss at gmail.com, and a link. Those will get you somewhere. You can send in uh, comments, suggestions, or pictures within reason. And if you watch this in replay, leave a comment. Anything we talk about, agree with, disagree with, uh, let me know. I always read the comments, and I do always appreciate them. And in the description, there's a link for the Gilded server. What's a Gilded server, you might ask? It's kind of like Discord, place to hang out, chit-chat, share pictures, memes, uh, and whatnot. So we'll take a quick look, see who was out there so far. Uh, I know Kingpin was out there earlier, which I don't think shows up in the comments here. Uh, and Woods was out there. He'll be in bed, and yes, I hope, I would love to see Dave Reichert over Bob Ferguson as governor. Ferguson is our current uh, AG in the state, and he's one of the big uh, forces behind all the anti-gun laws in Washington, the new anti-gun laws in Washington. He's the one pushing them all. And Sergeant Joe Smith, gun websites. Hillbilly was out there, but uh, tried to stay awake, but didn't quite make it. I, I appreciate the effort. And Gizzard and G Webs commenting. And I think that's everybody who said anything so far. So is that, uh, you're saying the guy that's been responsible for all the bullshit? Anti-gun stuff in Washington is running for governor now? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, isn't that special? Yeah, and I think there's a half-decent chance that he will become governor just because we are... Washington is a one of the Democrat strongholds, and he's a Democrat, so I'm not sure. I'm hopeful because um, Reichert was a senator for for a while. Um, I think he re retired. Well, I don't know if he retired, but stepped down from being senator. Um, he was he's credited with catching the Green River Killer, which is kind of how he made his name uh, before he was governor. He was sheriff. Uh, and D Worm and Vulcan Rumble. Uh, he said he's in Massachusetts. If you live in a free state, I hope you appreciate the government you have. Unfortunately, I don't think the Democrat Party will ever show loyalty to the U.S. Constitution again. Uh, Vanessa Kitty's out there. And. Vulcan Rumble is also reheating pizza. Do you guys reheat pizza? I I usually don't. I'll just eat Wait, it cold. What? Oh no, for sure. Not right sometimes, now. Sometimes. Sometimes. It would kill me right now. But uh yeah, in toaster oven. I almost like pizza reheated in a toaster oven as much as That's the absolute best way to do it. Toaster yeah. oven. Three fifty, well, ten minutes. They make these it's round. That you turn put the pizza in and then it turns around for like a frozen pizza. And I'm wondering yeah. if you put a regular piece of pizza in there to reheat it. You know, that's essentially the same thing, but I don't know. I don't I know. used to have one of those. It's called a pizza pizzazz, I believe it was back in the day. Used to, it so it wasn't pizzazz. that good. It's just a pain in the butt to clean. I mean it was a huge metal rotating thing and it barely fit in your sink. And okay. It was Teflon coated, but for some reason, that Teflon coating, once it got cheese on it once or twice, 
it would not clean off. And hmm. It just is a mess. Noisy. Because the turntable itself, you'd think it would be electric, but well, it is electric, but it's extremely loud. And then you have a timer for the heat element, but the timer for the heat element is a manual, you know, just a kind of like an egg timer thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, spring winded thing. Why they didn't make that electric? Click, 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 click. Yes, click, click. exactly. <laughs> I wanted one of those when those came out, just partly for the novelty of it, but never got one. They take up a ton of counter space. <laughs> well, no, I'm glad I didn't. Yeah. But yeah, a toaster oven does. You just can't put a whole pizza in there, obviously, but pretty good because it makes it like a pizza oven where it's now. On top and bottom. If your standards aren't real high, Totino's makes a frozen pizza that is rectangular and will fit in a toaster oven. Oh, that's smart. Bought them before. They're like great a for a single pizza? person because there's we, not that much pizza. We usually have some. Uh, my son will eat them. Uh, I used to buy them. Kind of got tired of them. But I'll, I'll, the one problem with the Totinos is they stick to everything. Uh, I'll use the nonstick foil with them. Yeah, I put foil so down bad. and I spray nonstick coating on yeah. top of that. Yeah, otherwise, yes, it will stick to it. I think the the only pizzas that I've ever reheated were Papa Murphy pizzas, the take and bake kind. Because my wife used to, if we had leftovers, my wife would freeze them and then I recook them. They were really good then because it would toast up the the crust. I think I might have eaten one of those once, but only one time. Is it like uh, a? Is it like going to a subway where you go in there and you say, "I want this and this and this," yeah. and they do it in front of you? Okay. Yeah. I really like them. So you could yeah. be like, "I want more bacon." Yeah, I want even more bacon. Yeah, I want even more bacon. My yeah, my favorite of theirs is the cowboy, uh, the gourmet vegetarian is really good but it's really rich um it's it use they use a white sauce instead of a tomato sauce but it will i'll usually have them throw on like a ham on it just so that there's some meat uh baron svg it's out there so do you count them pizzas with white sauce as pizzas? I do. Well, Gizzards eats breakfast pizzas, so he probably takes any he counts anything as a pizza. Uh yeah, Casey's has two different kinds of breakfast pizzas. Theirs are good. And then they also have they have a chicken pizza with a white sauce, kind of like he's talking about and stuff. It's actually pretty good. That's kind Didn't of Alf Alfredo esque. Did you say the breakfast sausage. one is like sausage gravy on one of them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's kind of a gravy based with sausage, and the other one is bacon. If I've you never ask heard... them real nice, they'll make a half and half for you. Never heard anybody say anything bad about Casey's. Um, I don't know if it's just if they don't like it, they don't talk about it. But every time I've heard somebody mention Casey's pizzas, uh, they like them. They're pretty good. I'm going to try one then. Uh, there's Gun no snob doesn't right like here. them. Gun snob doesn't like them at all. So uh, there's one person who doesn't like them, but he's strange. So uh, Vanessa Kitties mentioned in Scotus shall those are, those are be hearing. Right? Yeah, she'll be hearing a few gun right cases in the near future. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, they may help every state's residents against current infringements. Uh, Vulcan Rumble's asking if he should invest in his own pizza bag. What What's that mean? a pizza bag? You mean like um, they keep them when they do delivery to your house? That kind of pizza bag? Or, or is it something else? I'm not sure. That's the only thing I could think of. Uh, there's only Casey's in the middle of the country. I know I've been to a Casey's before, but it must have been while I was traveling. We don't have them. Yeah, yet. Midwest, basically. Based in Iowa. Oh, really? 
some people say it's not a real state. So they got ki- they got chicken and potato wedges, right? Because I think I went to where mm-hmm. they get potato yes, wedges. They do. Want chicken there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Where was that? It might have been in Nebraska. That's possible. I'm kind of interested in this pecan wood smoked channel catfish on a pizza. Uh, I've never heard of such a thing. I would try it. I don't know. I don't know. I wonder if that's she makes that because it says my pecan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. homemade. Yeah. You don't see you never seen Vanessa Kitty's pizza stuff? Um, I've seen her uh when she built her outdoor kitchen. Basically, yeah. um, I on Instagram I've seen the pictures of that. Yes, it is a delivery bag. Okay, I don't know where you get those. Well, you get them at a. I've seen them at thrift shops all the time. You can get them. Hmm. The thing is, um, and you could probably get them from delivery drivers that just never give them back. But I think they plug in or something like with a special plug because I've seen them and I was like, hey, "What's this all about?" But it's got some kind of a like a magnet thing that it sticks to. And you'd have to have the other side of it for it to heat up. You know what I mean? Mm. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but they're designed to just be set there and then pick back up. You don't have to like plug it in. You just set it there, kind of like a magnetic charger and, on a phone. Like oh, an induction cool. heater? No, I think it's just, oh, I don't actually know. But I just know that it's a it's a plastic disc at the bottom, and that's what connects to the store to keep it hot or to charge it up, I guess. But I think it's electrics in there. I don't think it's just... Uh, Right? It's just electric, like an electric blanket, I think, because that's what it feels like. I played with two of them before. I never bought one, though. They're not on Amazon. Carolina EDC Reviews is out there. Good evening. He's up late. Uh, Baron said the Pizza Factory is the best pizza chain he's ever been to. I've never been to the Pizza Factory. Pizza Factory? Never heard of it. That has to be up by you, probably. Uh, Midget with carrot cake is swinging by. Uh, it's going to head off to bed. Find the location. Uh, Vanessa Kitty said restaurant supply stores have heated delivery and transport bags. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, we have pizza factories. They're all over the place. Arizona, California. There's a ton in California. Georgia, Idaho, Nevada, Texas, Washington. So there are a lot of places. One, one pizza I was surprised by was Wolfgang Puck. Um, he has a pizza chain. I think I think he it was just pizzas. Uh, had it in I think Guam, and I was surprised. It was pretty good. Expensive, of course, because it's Wolfgang Puck, but. Well, I imagine everything in Guam is expensive, except for fish, probably, right? Oh. Yeah, Vanessa Kitty, my local restaurant supply has wonderful floor version of a dough mixer, absolute giant mixer. They have the largest coffee maker I've ever seen. That's one thing I still, I have always wanted, just a stand mixer. I still want to stand mixer, but uh, I don't want to take up counter space, and I don't want to have to take it out and put it away. Yeah, you mean daughter, like a KitchenAid? Yeah, yeah, daughter has one of those, and uh, if you're making a big meal, they are great. I mean, they'll do everything. Need dough, whatever you want. Well, but, and yeah. with the attachments, you can, you know, shred cheese and grind juice meat. And, yes, you yeah. Can. They are expensive, but I would love to have one if I had the counter space. I mean, they do, like you say, take up quite a bit of counter space. But they're great. Calgary Cantus is out there. Lactose intolerant definitely makes pizza harder to enjoy, but still amazing. <laughs> and she said Baron makes great pizza. And Carolina is off work tonight, but doing a bunch of video editing. Well, happy to have you. Oh, there's a link for this week's poll. 
pinned at the top of the chat. So if you haven't voted yet, you can head over there and vote. And Vanessa Kitty has a stand mixer on a movable stainless steel rolling cart. You can need 10 pounds of flour at a time. That's a lot of kneading. I've worked with ones in kitchens before that are like probably 35 gallons or something. Yeah. You know, like stand there next to them. You can get that kind of stuff from like restaurant auctions. You know, find a restaurant that's going out of business or um commissary or something that's going out of business and they'll sell you all their you know they'll sell they'll auction off all that equipment the kind that'll take a hand if you're not careful well yeah but you can go you know you could throw like well you know 35 gallons is like a huge thing yeah typically that stuff gets used for boring cafeteria food though you know so it never sees anything good uh carolina Wants to know opinions on best streaming platform. Oh. What what's the best streaming platform? Do you all prefer? Then he clarified. Uh oh. Yeah, because I, thought... I was I was mistaken with my response. Yeah, I thought he was talking to do a stream also. Yeah, right. that's what that's what I thought. Uh, Prime Netflix. I only have uh, Prime. I had Netflix up until they lost all their movies <laughs> when when that big purge happened. Uh, and kind of when they, that was about, that was just after when they stopped uh, doing physical DVDs, which kind of sucked because there were a lot of old movies you couldn't find anywhere that you could get when they were still mailing them out, like real old uh, Kurosawa movies. That you don't see anywhere. That and uh, Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter, but it it's a really bad movie and had to be made for just a couple thousand dollars because, like, they're filming in the park and there's people in the background watching them film. It's that low budget. And there's an awful lot of people up late tonight. Uh, Chris from the 740. Oops. It's up late. Good evening. Up late or up early? Well, Ooh. yeah, that's true. Uh, I think Amazon, although I don't usually, I just watch the stuff anyway, but uh, so I don't subscribe to any of them except Amazon anymore. But, uh, I've had Netflix before and we had Blockbuster back in the old days. So I've never had any of the others, but what I like about the Amazon, I don't know if the others do this, but if you could pause or if you're watching a movie, you can pause or you don't even have to pause, I don't think. And it'll tell you all the DVD extra type of stuff, you know, like what goes on in that scene or where the actors are. Or yeah. Any kind of interesting stuff. So especially for movies I've seen a bunch of times, I find that to be pretty interesting. But yeah, then I, I think had... Apple or one of the some of the new ones make pretty fun like pretty good stuff i think it was apple or maybe i don't think it was amazon but amazon has reacher so anyway i think the networks they're all pretty good i've had netflix and i've had hulu and they're both okay well, i used hulu when it was free but i never paid for it i didn't like I, the commercials. i had paramount plus for a week when i Signed up for it so I could watch a Super Bowl. Got a free week trial, and then I canceled after the Super Bowl was over. But... I think I might <laughs> have Paramount Plus because of T-Mobile, but I've never gone in and set up the account. They, uh, it's one of the, the, pretty sure that's the one that they said, hey, we're doing this, you get it for free now. Right. It was a pretty good deal. The Super Bowl was available on Paramount Plus. You could sign up, and the first week was free, and you could cancel any time. So it's like, okay, so I can sign up for this, watch the Super Bowl, cancel it afterwards, and pay zero. And they said, yeah. I was like, sign me up. Because <laughs> they're gambling on the fact that you'll forget to cancel. 
No, yeah, no, no, like no, it no. or whatever, right? It's, it's no, 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 no. <laughs> I had a oh. reminder set. I didn't forget. Carolina said, got Netflix, but not much movies there. Just got Prime. Yeah. And Prime Vanessa, is all right, too, really. Vanessa's got all of them. Paramount, Peacock, Prime, Netflix, and a few more. Well, since I canceled my cable, you know, there's a limit on the free stuff I can watch. So, legally, let me put the flying quotes up there. Uh, we've got uh, DirecTV. And one of the reasons we still have it is so we can get the, the one Japanese channel, which... The, the channel is not going to be doing satellite service anymore. So DirecTV is switching to another Japanese channel, which we're kind of waiting to see if that one's going to be any good. They've got a free preview going on right now, but there's only like seven shows and they just keep repeating them. So I don't know if that's the way it's going to be forever or if that's just for the preview. Kind of lame that they're not making it clear for you. Because there are channels that just play seven shows over and over and over again, and that's pretty. Yeah. There was one I was watching when I was in San Antonio, because I got to binge watching Perry Mason episodes, and it was on this channel called Justice Central TV, and I think it was. Either Perry Mason or Matlock, and I think those were the only two shows they ever showed 24 hours a day. Uh, Perry Mason's pretty good. Oh, yeah. I, I uh, went back the recent this weekend where the, and watched the old Disney, the uh, Dr. Sin, um, the Scarecrow of Romney Marsh. He's kind of like a Robin Hood character. And Swamp Fox, the series they did, which I did not remember that Nez, uh, Leslie Nielsen played the Swamp Fox in that. Hmm. It's kind of weird to see him now that I realize who it is as the Swamp Fox, but he did a decent job. The Scarecrow is better. It was, what's that? Swamp Fox is a military show. Yeah, it's it's based on um, Francis Marion, who was the real Swamp Fox in the Revolution. Kind of did hit and run and hit in the in the marshes in the uh, in the swamps. But the the Scarecrow is better but it's only a three parts they did they did a three part series and then in england they put them all together to make a movie the but they cut out some stuff so if you ever watch it watch the the three part one there's there's a little more to it <clears throat> uh, the only reason carolina got prime was because of the new roadhouse movie coming out I probably won't watch the Roadhouse. Is that a continuation or just a remake? Uh, I thought it was a remake, but I don't know. And Vanessa Kitty uh, watches Tubi, the Tubi app, because they have very old shows and movies. Uh, and she's saying it's a remake. And Chris, uh, my wife has to have them all. I spend a small fortune on Hulu, Netflix, Paramount, Prime, and Peacock, and would be fine just with YouTube. Oh, so let's take a look at this week's poll. 
and we get the right window up there there we go and it was what was your favorite subject in school math english history pe shop class and 51 percent said history that was that was probably uh, my one of my favorite subjects was history uh, shop class it, shop class was fun and pe was fun uh math i was oh, i am terrible at math and english one percent one person said english do you count autos as shop yeah how come when i bring that up i don't get any of the voting buttons the results you mean you have to vote first yeah, I didn't see any buttons to vote with. Hmm, I voted. I added a comment on now. I'll go ahead and answer. It doesn't it. end. I already got it on the screen. Anyway, I left a comment, so you'll see what my... Oh, Gary's being disenfranchised. Oh, you don't see my comment, because you probably brought this up before the show started. Uh, Yeah, let me... I'll refresh. And then let me. Our shop see. classes were like over by the smoking area and by this like one parking lot. So essentially, you went to the shop classes and you were away from the rest of the school. So I, I really like being in shop. You just hang out over there and not have to even be around school. I expected to be in a minority cool. with my answer, so I'm not surprised. What'd you uh, pick? Calib Calibers 32 special. Uh, took three years of wood shop and three years of architectural drafting. Wanted to also take auto shop and metal shop, but couldn't do all four. Sergeant Joe Smith, PE art shop in that order. Probably. I kind of like home ec in junior high. Got sewing, got into sewing a bit after that and started cooking at home. Reading classes. Always loved relaxing and closing my eyes and imagining the story the teacher would read. <clears throat> Books like The Outsiders, Little House on the Prairies, uh, Where the Red Fern Groans, Old Yeller, and more. After the after that science class, then history, spelling, and math were the least favorite. Thought I was in the advanced class for both. Um, the goddamn bacon, lunch prep. I'd say legally se selling candy and soda, but at least... The former was somewhat formally sanctioned by the staff without politics. On an unrelated note, I learned a lot about business and politics doing the latter. Who was that? Uh, the goddamn bacon. Did you guys ever sell candy at school? Uh, in grade school. I, guess I sold I sold the uh, would sell the garbage patch stickers. Oh, nice. We go get candy bulk and then sell it at school. I got suspended for it. Oh. <laughs> Made a ton of money though. It's great. Uh, a Joe Guevara at fifty nine and in and an industrial maintenance tech. I guess I'm still in the shop class. Tom Payne French. She was amazing. We in junior high we had a substitute typing teacher that was like that. French. Uh, Vanessa Kitty, math, chemistry, and physics. Uh, to a chef and barbecue, history, geography were my favorites. Hillbilly Up, girls was my favorite subject in school. Gear websites. We had a lot of shop classes. I had two each semester. Uh, math was a great time too though gizzard gary mathematics i took the equivalent of six years credit in high school and ended up being my college major and carolina edc junior ROTC, junior rotc uh thank you to everybody that voted i did not enjoy school very much so i was not there very often Luckily, it did work out in the end where I'm a responsible member of society and able to pay my bills. It's commendable. 
Uh, but probably history was one of my favorites. And my high school had a forestry class. I really enjoyed those. Um, we had forestry one and two. But we had an agricultural department. So we also had like animal husbandry and I forget what other ones. And I got the TA in my uh, senior year. I TA'd for the ag department. So I got to drive the little S10 we had, drive that around. We had a school farm, drive out there sometimes or drive in the town and get the, well, school was in town, but uh, drive to the steel shop and get like take um, chainsaw chains to get them sharpened and stuff like that. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, but overall, you know, I I missed the maximum allowable days every year. And like I was <clears throat> was talking uh, in the pre-chat, had lunch this weekend with friends that the pretty much the only people that I kind of kept in touch with from high school. They're hoping to go to lunch like quarterly just so we stay in touch more. Uh, one of them had moved away and was gone for a while and he moved back oh, a few years ago, so got back in touch. And then the other other two uh, basically lived with them at different different points throughout the years. Um, one of them, Kevin, he's the reason that I was out in Eastern Washington. He was going to Washington State University, and. He's like, well, you're not doing anything. Why don't you come out here? Yeah, all right. So I lived out there uh, for a while. Took some classes. Um, over the years, had taken, uh, you know, went to community college, different, a couple different community colleges. And then while I was at, uh, in Pullman, where WSU is, I wasn't going to school, but was dating a girl. And she's like, hey. Uh, why don't you just take classes? You're here anyways. And that was, she was, she was kind of the start of me getting my shit together where I started becoming a responsible adult. And so I took some classes, didn't, didn't finish because I'm not good at sitting still for a long time, like through lectures and stuff. So I would, uh, a lot of times I would just go bowling or go play pool at the Cub, the student union building. I, I enjoyed learning. I just was not good at sitting still for that long and listening to somebody talk. Uh, Baron said he got a GED so he could miss as many days as he needed. And Vanessa Kitty got my high school diploma, but enlisted in the Air Force back in April of that year, 1980. Basic September 4th paid for time in service from April 80, my entire career. And Vanessa also said, went to high school for chemistry classes in my senior year on a Sunday, but that was a plus for me. Oh, we and didn't have any Sunday classes in high school. Yeah, we didn't either. Uh, the Saint took uh, cooking classes, had all the chicks. I remember taking home ec. I guess we had to or something. I think I had to, so I, I took it my senior it, year. 
I think it took a good freshman just to get it out of there. It was something yeah, cooked. I uh, did. I don't think it was freshman year because it was mandatory. Oh, no, what? It was in junior high for us. I did sewing and cooking in junior high. And I think that let me not have to take it in high school. I think it's kind school. of a joke because my mom had taught me how to cook, sew, and do all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, exactly. I, it was a I took offer. it anyway. What the heck? And the teacher was like, well, you know how to sew. I'm like, yeah, well, my grandma it's taught me how to sew a long time ago. <laughs> Essentially, you're, just t- you're like helping your grandma growing up. It's like you know how to sew because you got nothing else to do except sit there helping your grandma. Yeah, my great grandmother taught me how to sew. It can come in handy. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's essentially doctoring with stitches and stuff. And I used to like to do uh, needlepoint. It's kind of, I don't know, it's almost like connect the dots. You know, You're talking like, like the picture. kind where you buy a set and it, or whatever you call it, like a kit, and then you just color by numbers, or you start with blank and do something. I would, I would start with blank. I just have a frame, and then you know, just kind of. I think I would trace in pencil whatever design I wanted to, and then you go to it with your colored threads. Yeah, make your design. If you got the time to do it, that's the way you do it. You can make your own custom patches that way. I didn't learn anything cool like that. I did a couple of years ago learn how to tie knots with paracord and stuff like that. Make my own lanyards and stuff, which is kind of cool. Crocheting, essentially. That's pretty much is, yeah. I think so. I think that's just a bunch of knots. There was this channel called Tying It All Together back in the old days of YouTube, but it's probably still there. Maybe it's not. He made a book or something. But his deal was every day he would, maybe not every day, but every once, you know, pretty much every day, he would make a new video with something with paracord and. You know, it's pretty easy, easy when you have like a blue one and a red one. You know, you can see how the knot's made or whatever. Or like you're saying, lanyards and monkey fists and all kinds of shit. Well, if you so, go to uh, buy green. lanyards and then you find out how cheap paracord is and you can make tons of lanyards for basically nothing. Yeah, it's a skill worth picking up for sure. Definitely. And you can do that kind of stuff while you're sitting around being bored. Like all you mm-hmm. got to do is have paracord with you and you got keychains or lanyards to five minutes later. Uh, Vanessa Kitty, I enlisted because I needed a home after graduation. I was able to stay home until basic. I had been working jobs throughout high school years, every moment I could do. And she hemmed and sewed all her patches and ranks on her uniform in the Air Force. Graduation for basic had me adding A1C stripes on my uniform and even before midnight, E3 just after basic graduation. And she's making bison hide leather bags currently. Vulcan Rumbles asking, can you make a pretty diamond knot? He's been trying for years. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know if I've ever tried. I used to do something like that for making pockets for slings. You ever made a player cord sling? Those are pretty handy. So I'd do something like that for the pocket, but not good looking necessarily. That was a question for you, Gary. I have not, no. But it'd be worth looking up, see if I could figure out how. I don't have any experience with paracord. You should try it. I probably should. There's but videos not... on YouTube on how to do it. It's how I learned. <laughs> YouTube is a great resource. Mm-hmm. I watched several videos till I found one that was actually slow enough and 
I could kind of follow along and figure out exactly how they did everything. And once I finally got it, it's like, oh, now I got this. Boom. Uh, Vanessa Kitty bought some micro cord to make lanyards and small monkey fist zipper pulls. I may or may not have some zipper pulls left over from Shot Show. Just saying. <laughs> You're lousy with the zipper pulls. Or not, depending on how you look at it. That's the what the the fifties definition of lousy. Lousy with you have a lot of them. Well, my Gorn has one of them. I've been saving, slowly saving, for a lever rifle and almost blew it oh, no. on an M&P. The CDNN has some LEO trade-ins. And I almost almost bought one. Kind of just because it was there. And I don't have an MMP. Well, I do. I have the 380EZ, which technically is an MMP, but kind of an MMP. Yeah, I bought one last year, too. I used one. I like it. And I was looking. Today, spent all day looking at Glock 32s. I... I have come into some 357 SIG ammo and I don't have a 357 SIG gun. Do you have a 40 cal? I do. I think my um, P30 is probably. I don't know if there's a conversion barrel for the CHP guns. Oh. Uh, the, no. But. Uh... Well, that I was, was one of the Glock wise, whether you had a 22 or a 23. No, okay. I only have the 20. That's one of the reasons I was kind of looking at the, the M and P's was because of the conversion barrels. And then, then I started just looking at Glocks. Now you can get for the CHP. You can get nine millimeter conversion I don't, barrels. I don't need a nine millimeter conversion barrel for the. If you want to really weaken your CHP gun. Yeah. I think I'm going to bring mine to Thunder on the Prairie. By the way. But if I did that, then that would blow everything that I've saved up for a lever gun, which is usually what I end up doing. So I'm trying yeah, to stay trying I to stay strong. Too. But uh, it's kind of tough because you you know you save up enough and then you realize you have enough to get this. I could get this right now instead of saving up for however long. I That's was usually what I do. I was gonna get one last year and I passed it up and it was fifty dollars off too. I should have done it. I wished I had. I God Baron Baron sold one of his and it was beautiful. Uh, it was a Henry, but it was it didn't have the side loading gate. It was um, it was just before they the side loading gates came out, but it was a really nice looking lever gun. <laughs> Otherwise, I probably would have bought it from him. Guns and waters out there. Good evening. I don't know. I don't know if I can stay strong. It might. It might blow. Blow my wad. I don't know. Hang I really in. want. I really want that Glock now. Squib would tell you just put it on your credit card. 
uh, my accountant it takes issue <laughs> when I do that. That can happen. Yeah, like when I bought the my uh, Super Blackhawk. Ooh, she blew a fuse. Because I saw it, fell in love with it, and then went back the next day and bought it. And I only had half of it in cash. So I put the other half on on the credit card and heard about it immediately. <laughs> but uh, I just, you know, I ended up selling off a little bit of silver and paid it off. Which I still not absolutely sure if I'm going to take anything with me, but if I do, I'll take my uh, Super Black Hawk with me to Thunder on the Prairie. It's seven, I think seven and a half inch, 44 Magnum. Stainless. I've definitely never shot 44 Magnum. It's fun. It's uh, the grip takes a little getting used to that angle on that, that grip angle. Uh, definitely takes a little the more you shoot it the more comfortable you get with it I'll say that and Guns Water wants to know blued or stainless I it'll probably end up being blued but I love stainless guns um, but we'll just have to wait and see I don't have anything specifically in mind just yet Wonder if he's uh, talking about the Super Blackhawk. Oh, my super yeah, my Super Blackhawk is, sta is stainless. <clears throat> and Baron said, "I found the trick to buying guns without getting in trouble is to get her one at the same time." That doesn't really work for me, is my wife doesn't like guns. And Vanessa Kitty bought a very nice edge beveler for leather from Singapore company, Chrisma, Chris, Crimson Hides. The arc beveler is such a pleasure to use. So top tip for those doing leather work. Parent <laughs> said she just read the last comment and smoke came out of her ears. Oh, yeah, and Guns and Water. That was the Super Bowl. Yeah, my, I would show you, but the YouTube rules. It is the 7.5-inch stainless version. Which I was not... I, I When I go to Cabela's, I'll look at the used guns just because I enjoy looking at the used guns. And I saw it in the case and was immediately infatuated with it. And when I went home, couldn't get it out of my head and went went back the next day and bought it. You're lucky because a lot of times what happens is you pass them up and you go back the next day and they're gone. That, like, happened, no! <laughs> that happened with uh, AK-12 that I saw at the shop and I had, you know, I'm not an AK guy. But for some reason, it caught my eye and thought about it. It's like, well, you know, I don't, I'm not really interested in that. Went home and thought about it more and went back the next day and it was gone. And it, it was even like a really good deal. It was, uh, I don't remember what price it was, but it was, for some reason, it was cheaper than normal. And I, I don't know. wish I had bought it, but, you know, say la vie. Uh, what caliber Super Blackhawk? It's 44 Magnum. I probably wouldn't have bought it if it was 357. The 
I think one of the reasons I bought it at the time was I wanted a large kind of impractical gun, something big and loud and just cuz. And that, you know, I stumbled across that one and bought it. I still, still would love to have a Desert Eagle. They're impractical, but they're big and obnoxious and kind of cool. Uh, Vanessa Kitty said her Cabela's seems a ghost town for firearms lately. Hardly nothing in the gun library. That's the way ours is now, but that's that we had some more anti-gun laws passed that went into effect this January. So there was a run on everything. And now with the, we have in Washington a semi-automatic rifle ban. All they have are bolt actions and shotguns for long rifles. And the handguns is are, are pretty sparse now also. Uh, the Saint is asking, does the SIG X5 lower receiver work with an AXG full-size trigger group and slide? Same mags? A Legion? I don't know. I don't know. It seems like it would, but I wouldn't take my word for it. But it sh seems like it should. So I'm pretty sure it's the same lower receiver. Uh, Vanessa Kitty saying buy a 629. And Chris, I have a T Sauce Night Stalker on layaway at Butts. Nice. And it's killing me not using my credit card to get it out. I think there aren't any shops local that do layaway. And I think if they, if there was, I, I would be in a lot more trouble. Yeah, mine does. Never used it, but they do. Yeah, that Night Stalker's a nice pistol. I shot that. John Brown Productions is up. Good evening. Yeah, I'll be looking at, at stuff online and my wife, wife will walk by and go, no, no. Uh, Chris is saying the 320 fire control unit will work in any 320 frame. I thought so. And Vanessa Kitty's oldest handgun is her first 629, bought in the fall of 1982 when she got stationed in Alaska. Yeah, one of the uh, kind of been looking at the Raging Hunter, the Taurus Raging Hunter 460, the the two tone ones, I excuse me, are kind of neat looking. I was I I would I want a five hundred, but talking with Hillbilly, he's kind of he was saying four sixty. Go with the four sixty, four sixty, which I wasn't really interested in. But kind of the more I look at it, it's like wow, I wouldn't mind having that. You are a pain junkie, aren't you? I am a recoil junkie, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, 460 would be a good bet. But, you know, that's on the long list of things I would love to have, but may never, ever have.
There you go. There's two or three votes for the 460 right there. And Baron 460 lets you chew, shoot cheaper ammo like 45 Colt. That'd be a plus. Vanessa Kitty 460 is a strong shooter. And so is the Smith and Weston 50. Guns and Water 460 shoots more calibers. And I I understand that, and that makes logical sense, but I, I don't know. There's something about the 500, the Smith and Wesson 500 that that I want. But I also want a 454 Casul, and that that's one that I've wanted for years and years. Uh, when I worked, when I was working on campus at WSU, one of the contractors that I worked with. I went over to his house and he had a super black hawk 454 casual. I think it was, I think that's the one he had laying on his floor and looked at it, didn't touch it, but you know, we had stopped by his house to grab something and it was just laying on the floor in his living room, but have kind of been infatuated with them ever since. Uh, Guns and Water saying the BFR is a cheaper entry into the Smith & Wesson big boys. I don't like the way they look. That's the problem with those for me. And Vanessa Kitty wants a 50 BMG rifle on her bucket list. Um, I I don't know. I'm not interested in... I I would love to shoot one, but I'm I, I don't have an urge to buy one. There was a local shop that had two of them for sale years ago, but they're out of my price range. And Guns of Water saying 460 shoots 454 Casual. Yeah, that the look of the Blackhawks. That's kind of the thing that with the I think the four inch barrel. Is the one that I want. And the Smith & Wesson 500, I want the the snub, snubby one that comes in the, uh, like the one that comes in the bear kit. Just because of the way it looks. Uh, Venice Kitty saying the 50 cal flintlocks were a blast to use out hunting. And the four fifty, the Freedom Arms 454 Casul has been on our buy list since the 80s. And the Freedom Arms 454 Casul has been on our Talking about these, it's similar to talking about some of the old Mopars where, you know, it's, I enjoy it, you know, thinking about them and then, but also kind of makes me sad because I don't have it. Uh, John Brown Productions wants a Ma Deuce. He wants an M2. And Guns and Water said a longer barrel shoots faster by a lot on those cartridges. That's true, but I I like the look of the shorter barrel. And for me, that's a lot of it is the way a gun looks. It's like the, other than, you know, the 380 easy that I have, uh, I don't like the M&P line. I, they're good guns. I just don't like the way they look. So I don't, that's why I've never wanted one. And Glocks were kind of that way. Whoa. 
hopefully my internet stays up. I just kind of flashed there for me. That's uh, all. <clears throat> Glocks were kind of that way for there. a long, for a long time until, until I bought my G20 and then shot it. And now I really like Glocks. They're still kind of, you know, plain Jane looking. But... Yeah, there's something kind of cool about that, though. Uh, they're not my favorite. They're not my least favorite. I mean, there's probably something I like about a lot of guns. But I'd feel bad if I didn't have at least a couple of Glocks in my collection. So, But I'm never going to be a, just a Glock guy either. Yeah, the 48, I think... I think the G48 was the first one that I ever shot. I rented it at the range and I really liked it. It shot well, it was comfortable. Um, and that's kind of started the changing my mind on the Glocks. And then when I went to the gun store and was trying to remember. When I bought my, oh, I got the G20 as a replacement for my witness 10 millimeter that I got rid of. That's why I bought it because um, I wanted another 10 millimeter because I wanted to get rid of that witness. Almost I, bought a 20. Almost. They're, they're a nice gun. I had one in my hand. I was going to do it, and then I decided at the last minute not to. And I was close. <laughs> I would, some, some people think that because they're the large frame, mm -hmm. that they're a little chunky for some people. Yeah, that was my worry about, you know, because I have smaller hands as to whether I'd be able to get a good grip on it. But it seemed like to me... I would be able to. And I've shot some tens before and not had any problem. So Yeah. They're not as bad as everybody makes them out to be. No. And I I I would love to have a ten millimeter nineteen eleven. I've shot one or two of them. They're nice. As um, I my the one nineteen eleven I have is the Kimber. It's the Kimber Custom LW Ghost. There might be another word that I'm leaving out. I don't know. It's a long name, but it has the aluminum frame. It's the LW is lightweight, and I kind of wish I had got an all steel frame. I want a real Colt someday. Well, you can you can buy one. No one's stopping you. They want money. Oh. Lots of it. Yeah, that that makes it tough. But that that's kind of the things when I'm I, I switch between when I'm looking online. I'll look at lever guns and I'll look at 1911s and I'll look at some 10 millimeters. And lately I've been looking at 357 SIG guns and I'll just kind of rotate through and think, oh, no, this is this is what I should get. And then it'll switch. To, no, this this is this is probably what I should get. This would make more sense. And then, no, no, this this is what I should get. See, my first 1911, the Taurus, and it's a uh, blued frame, so I really want one in a stainless frame. But for some reason, some people think those are worth more. Mm. But they're pretty. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, Vanessa Kitty's revolvers are... Eight and three eighths barrels. She's, wow. She's got the long ones. And she has a Gen 5 G17. I don't have any Gen 5s. Got two Gen 4s. That's what mine is a Gen 4. 
And of course, my 42 is genless. And John Brown Productions had a 69 and a half 446 pack Super B. That's a lot of muscle right there. And she says some nice Colt 1911s in the Cabela's gun library. Yeah, next time I'm in town, I'm going to go to Cabela's just for the heck of it. I haven't been in in a while. And I've got some points on my Cabela's card. So. I, I'll go once a month, once every couple of months. Go down and... Look around, like, you know, I like to look at the used guns and then, you know, I'll look at what, just to see what the new guns look like, what they got there. And I'll pick up a couple of boxes of ammo. Yeah, I buy all my gas on my Cabela's club card so I can rack up club points. Ah. <laughs> I don't have the credit card. I just have the club card, the regular Right. Well, when I bought that, uh, when I bought that Taurus G3C, they offered me a deal on it. If I signed up for the card, I got like X amount of money off the price of the. They, I couldn't hardly turn it down. The offer, it's like okay, so if I sign up for this credit card, you'll give me an extra thirty dollars off the price of the gun, and I get a free flashlight. What's the catch? No catch. You have to pay it back. That's the catch. Nah, not really. Then I, I was looking at the stuff. They kept sending me stuff. It's like, you know, if you buy gas, you get double X Cabela's Club points, and those apply to your account, and you can spend them at your Cabela's. It's like, okay. I'm going to be putting it on a card anyway. Might as well put it on that card. Because I just pay it off at the end of the month anyway. I don't ever let the charges revolve. I'm I'm not paying them interest. Yeah. I don't do that on any of my credit cards, but I use them occasionally just to keep them, you know, active. Uh, Venice Kitty, Cabela is 13 miles east-southeast. Um, ours is about 15 minutes, probably 15 minutes away. Mine's an hour and a half, but when I'm at my daughter's, it's only 20 minutes away. So that makes it easier. And Guns and Waters hates the Cabela process of dragging their feet, hoping you'll buy more stuff. Our Cabela's uh, is a nightmare to buy a gun from. I've heard other... From people that um, other Cabela's aren't aren't as bad, but I've bought a couple guns from them, and it can be like a three hour process. In it's it's horrible. When you pick it up, you can schedule an appointment time. So uh, you schedule your time, and then you. You know, you go basically to your appointment time. But the people working the counter, if it's busy at all, won't talk to anybody unless you they've called your number. So to even get their attention to let them know that your appointment time is, is up is a pain in the ass. And then waiting there is a nightmare. And that being said, I've bought far more guns at Academy than I ever have Cabela's. Academy's easy. We have pretty much, um, there's the Cabela's, uh, there's the local gun shops, which um, our local gun shops aren't very good. Uh, and the Cabela's, there's Bass Pro Shop, but it's in Tacoma, which is like half an hour away. And in Tacoma, I don't like going into 
Tacoma any more than I have to. Uh, Woods will back me up on that. And Shields isn't too bad. I bought one gun from Shields. There's, um, it's not Sports Authority. It's, now I can't think of the name. But that's who I bought the, my shotgun from. But they're, they're like an hour away. The two closest stores are both like an hour away. Sportsman Warehouse. Thank you. That's. That's the one that the other kind of chain. Uh, Big Five, who I don't even know if they still sell guns. They did sell like bolt rifles and probably shotguns. Dix, who stopped selling guns. Um, yeah, forget Dix. The, the Walmart, I'm not sure if our Walmart did, but it was, you know, a tiny section. And I don't even know what they ever did, and I don't know if they still do. Ours has long guns, a few. There's just two little carousels. One has shotguns, one has rifles. Not very many, like a dozen shotguns and a dozen rifles. So not much to choose from, but there's a few there. Uh, there is, I can't think of the name. There's another one. They, they have a couple stores in, I think, Puyallup and maybe farther north. Who I've never been to. Uh, one of the, the drivers that delivers to work, he was telling me about them, that they have a, it's a sporting goods place. And I've looked up online. I haven't looked in a couple of years, but their online was basically like a catalog. So it wasn't. Their website was not very interactive. Okay. You know, you could, there's a list of stuff that they might have, but you don't know if they actually have it or not. Yeah. I prefer. Like, if I'm going to drive to a place, I want to go online and say, okay, this is in stock. It's not in stock. At least I know before I drive all the way there whether it's a waste of time or not. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, and Guns and Water and Vanessa Kitty are talking about the, I believe they're talking about the restaurant in the Cabela's, which closed. Uh, oh, yeah, in all of them, huh? Yeah, it never reopened. The, the one in uh, Lacey, it's where they keep all their bicycles now. The Bass Bro Shop in Tacoma had a bowling alley with the underwater theme that closed that closed down two years ago yes yeah, shields in wichita has a bowling alley and a, a ski ball thing i think too when i was a kid the showbiz pizza i think that's the one we'd go to their ski ball if you pulled the, your tickets, the reward tickets you'd get, if you pulled slowly but firmly, you mm -hmm. could continue to pull the tickets out. Yeah, I remember doing that at the ski ball thing one time. I don't remember what it was. Um, they have probably fixed it so the ski ball machines won't do that anymore. But You ought to go try it and see. I don't think they that's probably one of the reasons and then people would just stand there and throw the ball right in or whatever i think that's why the stuff was cost so much because they know so many people are messing with the system to get free tickets they'd have like a birthday or something and everybody would put their tickets together so you could get like the biggest thing yeah sportsman's warehouse is canadian by the way i don't know if everybody knows that i think 
think I've heard that. <clears throat> so I think I, I think I heard you mention that a while ago on one of yeah, your chats. Yeah, I usually say it. Because the other one, a Sportsman's Guide, is in Minnesota, and it's not. But they don't have stores. That's just a catalog. Uh, when Kitty saying at Chuck E. Cheese, I could tip up the coin drop game to give out all the tickets in the machine all at once. When when my son was little and we would go to Chuck E. Cheese, the one thing he liked to do was the stupid phone. He wouldn't play the games. They had they had a little phone, so the you know the characters would talk to you. Oh. And he he would spend all his money on that stupid phone. Their pizzas are supposed to be better now, but they're horrible little pizzas. They're worse than like Totino's. You don't go there for the food. We went in there one time and. You know, they'll stamp your kid and stamp you with the same stamp so you match. And stamps will usually end up wearing off on my hand. So when we went to leave, they'll check your stamps to make sure you've got, you know, your kid. And my stamp had worn off. So I just held him up next to my face because he looks, you know, a lot like me. And that worked. He is great in his beard also. <laughs> that was invented by Atari. Chuck E. Cheese. I think I knew that. Yeah, to promote their games. Well, because the guy who invented Atari got bought out, and when he's looking for something else to do, they bought the game, the company and the 2600 and all that, but they didn't buy everything. So he figured, let's make a thing where the parents can eat pizza and the kids can play these video games, but uh, essentially bringing everybody together instead of just going to an arcade. But he knew that he had the idea that um, another way to provide video games was... Uh, you know, an environment that brought the whole family together instead of just a video arcade. It was originally called Showbiz Pizza. Yeah, there's that, a whole thing about the showbiz. With, uh, I don't remember. I watched the thing about them years ago. And I don't even remember what I was the point I was going to The guy make. from Atari started the first one and then somebody came up, one of his franchisees went to like the franchisee meeting and everything and then went like, okay, well, I'm just going to start my own. And that was, it wasn't Showbiz, it was the other one. What was the other one called? I forget what the other one was called. And then eventually Chuck E. Cheese bought both of them. Where he bought, you know, they bought the other yeah, one. Yeah, because Showbiz had the, had the ape and Chuck E. Cheese had the mouse. A top tip for your Atari, um, old Atari games, uh, for Space Invaders, if you, when you turn the game on, if you hit the reset at the same time, your, your little tank will shoot two shots at once. So two in a row, you know, do, do. Hmm. Uh, I was able to, um, I think it goes up to 99 levels. I was able to hit that 99 level because of that. And I think I found out I did that on accident and found out. Cheater. Why? Well, it's not cheating. It's right. <laughs> it, I didn't change any code. I didn't, you know, it's for whatever reasons built into the game. I was just kidding. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Easter egg. What they call those? Or else maybe like a programming thing, like they needed if they needed to get to the level seventy-five for some reason, you know, 
give themselves a way to get there really fast. Yeah, that's what all the like God mode and in video games. That's all the developer code, so they can test out stuff. Uh, Mr. Gizgari. I had a question about today's bracket. Oh, I can't do the bracket. Um, after, after I had the, the jewels were, um, fixed, the customs stopped it at the border and cause they're checking to make sure there's enough, uh, domestic parts in it to see if that bracket is legal. Um, so I'm kind of waiting for them to release it. They're saying two weeks to a month to get it back. Oh, man. We should get those Canadian brackets. They're way cheaper. Yeah. Uh, but Mr. Gizgari, is there anything you'd like to plug? Oh, let's just tell everybody about my show on Friday. That's every Friday. Foul Territory is the name of the uh, live stream. That's at 9 p.m. Central. Uh, we talk about 2A matters and guns. We give away free stuff. And uh, we show your Gorn on the screen. So, I mean, well, you know, what's not to like? So, anyway, come by. And as always, watch everything that's on DM Foss's channel because it's just wonderful. So, thank you for the invite. Well, we don't want to overpromise there. So, uh, well, thank you for being here. You bet. Uh, G Webs. Oh, hey, wait. I can do this. Gearwebsites.com for 2A stickers, patches, books, logo design, web design, 3D printing, technology consulting, and so much more. Gearwebsites.com. Is there anything you'd like to plug, G Webs? Yeah, I'll plug uh, for everybody that's listening now or in the future to uh, take a second. I just got done with having food poisoning. So coming out of being all, you know, sore and miserable for a day or so, um, you always come out with a, whatever you call like a brighter look on life. So I just like to pass that along to people. Don't take stuff for granted and give everybody you love a hug or a kiss or whatever you do and uh, appreciate it. You know, we tend to, uh, I think I tend to, at least I'm assuming other people tend to just blow through things when you're not, you know, paying attention. And uh, this kind of stuff trips me up and makes me pay attention and appreciate the stuff we've got. So just throwing that out there. Appreciate the people you love. Tell them so. uh, that's a good advice. Always look on the bright side of life. So for everybody that was out there in the live chat, uh, I appreciate you being here and interacting. It makes it a lot more fun. And if you were watching and didn't say anything, I appreciate you too. Uh, don't be afraid to speak up. Let me know that you're out there. If you watch this in replay, once again, leave a comment. Uh, anything we talked about, agree with, disagree with? Uh, what's your favorite kid pizza joint? Uh, I read the comments, all of them, and I appreciate all of them. And there will be an overnight this weekend, and I don't know what we're going to talk about. But uh, other than that, I hope uh, everyone has a good rest of the night and go do something good. <laughs>